Hi, my name is Dr. Ryan Arthur. I have worked in a field of pedagogy and learning development for over a decade. I have designed this course to help you criticise academic works with complete confidence. Now the boring part. This course consists of three components. The first component is this video, which outlines three critical thinking processes. The second component is a task sheet which contains questions related to the content of this video. And the last component is a live informal discussion where we can discuss matters related to this video and the task sheet. On completion of these three components, you will be able to identify and create an academic argument, present reasoned arguments in a logical way, address criticality in academic reading and writing, identify and challenge assumptions embedded within academic arguments. Now the exciting part. I will outline three critical thinking questions to undermine academic texts. The word undermine comes from the medieval practice of destabilizing a structure by digging underneath it, which would bring the structure crashing down to the ground. Likewise, we will not directly attack an argument Instead, we will dig at his foundations to demolish it. Sometimes the best way to take the castle is to go under the walls, not over them. We can dig beneath the walls and bring them down, catching the enemy by surprise. Critical question number four. Does it contain any mention of race, class or gender? You can critique a study that neglects or barely mentions race, class or gender. You would be surprised how many studies neglect to mention race, class or gender even though these three matters impact most of our lives. It is as if some writers imagine that we live in neutral, genderless, classless and non-racialized societies. An example of this can be found in a debate on mental health. Do you notice anything about the panel of this debate? To be honest, I didn't notice anything about the panel until a member of the audience put forward a profound critical question. And a question for the organisers is how come we're looking at five white men? Thank you. Okay. Um. His profound question made me ponder. Why was there no representation from women or people of colour, given that mental health disproportionately affects these groups? Here are some examples of this critical question. Johnson fails to acknowledge the significance of gender in this issue. The author overlooks the fact that race contributes to the highest rate of... Another weakness is that we are given no explanation of how social deprivation impacts. The research does not take into account pre-existing tensions of gender. Please refer to the Critical Thinking 2 task sheet. Go to section 4. Does it mention race, gender or class? Question A. Give me an area of life where race, gender or class has no discernible impact. Also, explain why it does not have an impact. This is a very difficult task and I look forward to seeing your responses. Critical question number five. Are there any limitations? Many academic studies state their limitations or state how their study can be improved. You can pit their own limitations against them. You can use their own words against them. Generally, you will find these limitations in one of three places. Towards the end of the study, this is where the author will come clean and admit to some of the failings of their paper. Research papers will have a dedicated limitation section. It is very difficult to find a research paper that doesn't state its limitations. Sometimes at the beginning of the paper, the author will state the scope of their study and sometimes even discuss why their scope is limited. The important point here is that critique is not only found outside of the academic paper. Sometimes the paper can be used as a weapon against itself. For example, Mark Simon stated in his paper, I acknowledge the limitations of my research. I have not detailed the complex web of relationships. Armed with Simon's limitation, you can now launch a critique. Simon's study fails to detail the complexities of the relationships. Simon offers a simplistic account of the complex web of relationships. Here are some example sentences. Johnson's methodology reveals serious shortcomings of his study. The shortcomings of Johnson's study has compromised the usefulness of his findings. Even Johnson himself admits that his study has several failings. Great, everybody is on the same page. 
No, not everyone. I recall a student who was very upset with this technique. How can we use their limitations? That's cheating. We are supposed to formulate our own critique. My response was, all is fair in love and war. There are three reasons why this is not cheating. The first of which, a critique is a critique whether it emanates from yourself or the paper. Often, there are glaring mistakes in the paper, which the author is aware of. By telling us what the mistakes are, the author may be trying to preempt and mute our critique. That won't work with us. Second, sometimes the mistakes are hidden in the text. We need the author to reveal these mistakes. An example of this is a particular study on BME experiences of university students. The limitation mentioned in the study was that they were not able to gather the experiences of BME students themselves. They had to go through a lecturer who selected which BME students to interview. My ethical alarm bells were ringing when I read this. The possible bias of this approach cannot merely be brushed aside with an acknowledgement. Their revelation compromised the entire study. Third, for obvious reasons, Authors do not spend much time explaining their limitations. It is rarely more than a sentence. Sometimes these limitations need to be explored in more detail. This is our job. Please refer to the Critical Thinking 2 task sheet. I have enclosed the journal article. Look for the limitations in this journal article and formulate a strong critique from it. The limitations stated in this article are not very long. I need you to expand these limitations and explore them in more detail. The last critical question is, who is the author? By asking this question, we are going beyond the text itself and critically looking at the wider context. Often we mention authors in our work with little regard to who they are and the development of their scholarship. Looking at the background of an author shows your lecturer that you have read widely and demonstrates your discernment. It may also help explain why the author has taken a particular stance on an issue. Also, it is an excellent launchpad for critique, as exemplified by the late public intellectual Edward Said. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to start, in fact, talk throughout about an essay and a book written by Samuel Huntington entitled The Clash of Civilizations. When it first appeared in 1993, in uh, the journal Foreign Affairs, it had a question mark after it. Um, uh, and it announced in its first sentence that world politics is entering a new phase. Three years later, Huntington expanded the essay, some would say bloated it, to, uh, to the size of a book without a question mark. The new book, is which was published last year, entitled The Clash of Civilization and the Emerging World Order. My premise is that the essay is, is better than the book. I mean, it got worse the more he added to it. <clears throat> so I'll concentrate most of my uh, attention on the essay, but make some comments about the book as we go. Along. Here are some example sentences. Johnson, an American professor of education, stated that Smith has several publications in the area of this is a relatively new field for Jones. He previously published studies in the area of the works of Smith fall under three areas. Notice that these example sentences are just showing a snippet of information, a few words here or there, just to show the lecturer that you are aware of the wider context. It is also a good idea to pay attention to the intellectual tradition that they are from. Looking at this matter from the feminist perspective, Smith argues, Hayes, a theological ethicist, argues that, please refer to the critical thinking to task sheet. Go to section six, who is the author. Task A asks you to formulate a sentence that gives a brief background to an author of your choice. It is always good to end with a reflection. The last section in your task sheet asks you to reflect on any techniques in the video that you feel confident using in your current assignment. If so, how will you use them? Thank you for listening to this video. I hope you have enjoyed our journey. I look forward to meeting you in our live discussion where we can discuss the topics raised in this video and your responses to the task sheet.